Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a dynamics type question in two dimensions. So what we have here is an object and it's being pulled kind of in two different directions. It's being pulled by this first force up here that has a magnitude of 6 newtons and that makes a 44 degree angle with respect to traveling in a straight line. The second force is a magnitude of 10 newtons and it's pulling at a 27 degree angle with respect to going in a straight line. And we're asked what is F net? What is the sum of all the forces traveling, not traveling, affecting this object's travel and what direction is it going to end up moving? Is it going to go off this way? Maybe it'll go right down the middle? Maybe it'll go down here? That's what we're trying to figure out. So the first thing you need to keep in mind is that all vectors are made up of two components. There's an x component, which is how far they travel left and right, and there's a y component, which is how far they travel up and down. So for this vector here, for instance, hopefully you can see that it's moving. If we sort of made a straightish line down, it's traveling this far in the x direction. For this vector down here, it's a little bigger, it's traveling this far in the x direction. So the first thing we're going to find out is, remember these are vectors, what is the magnitude of those two vectors? So I'm going to call the first one, this shorter one, I'm going to call that Fx1. So it's the first force and it's the x component of it. So this sort of makes a 90 degree triangle. I'm trying to find the adjacent side and I know the magnitude of the opposite side is 6 newtons. So I am going to use cosine. So I'll go cos 44 equals adjacent, which I'm calling Fx1, over hypotenuse, the magnitude of that is 6. So cos of 44 Oh, my calculator died. It's okay. Cos of 44, then times 6. When I got that earlier, I got that equals 4.31 newtons. I'll do the same thing with the longer x vector. So that comes from the second force. So I'll call that F2x. And this time it'll be cos of 27 degrees equals F2x over... I guess I should call that fx2, just like the first one. It doesn't really matter what you call them, as long as it's something that makes sense to you. Over 10 newtons. So cos 27 times 10, I got that that equals to 8.91 newtons. So the sum, we use the Greek letter sigma for that. So the sum of the forces in the x direction is, the first one was 4.31 newtons, and then because the horizontal components of these vectors are traveling in the same direction, I'm going to add them. The other one was 8.9 newtons, and you should get that that totals up to about 13.21 newtons. Make sure I'm still in the frame. I am. Okay, so that's the first part. Now we need to find the sum of the forces in the y direction. So we'll do this vector up here, and I'll call that S Y 1. And then next we'll do the vector down here, and we'll call that S Y 2. So S Y 1, with respect to the 44 degree angle, it's the opposite side. So we'll use sine of 44 equals Fy1 over hypotenuse of 6. Sine of 44 times 6, I got that's equal to 4.16 newtons. I'll do this one next, Fy2. Sine of 27 degrees equals Fy2 over 10 newtons. And when I did that, 
I got it equals to about 4.5 newtons. Now to find the sum of the forces in the y direction, I'll take the first one, 4.16. Notice that this arrow here and this arrow are going in opposite directions. So I'm going to subtract the forces instead of adding them this time, minus 4.5. And I get that that's equal to about negative 0.34 newtons. Don't worry about the negative sign too much, it just tells us the direction. So the direction is going to be going down in our final answer, and I'll explain more about that in just one second. So what we'll do is we'll use the sum of those two forces to figure out what the overall movement is of this object. Okay, so I had where did it go? Up here, 13.21 newtons. So I'm going to define positive as being to the right and up are my positive directions. So 13.21 newtons, I'll say is this way. And negative 0.34 newtons would be going down. If I connect the two of those together, I'm going to end up with a resultant vector, and I'm going to find the magnitude of that. So this is just Pythagorean theorem. I'll call this Fx and Fy. So Fx squared plus Fy squared is going to be, I'm just going to call this Fr for F resultant. Squared. It's the same as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. fx squared, that would be 13.21 squared plus fy would be 0.34 squared. When I did those, I got that equals to 174.6. So to find fr, you take the square root of 174.6, and I got that that equals to about 13 newtons. So that's exciting. We found the magnitude. Now we need to find the direction. How much is this angle here? Well, we're going to use trigonometry again. Um, it doesn't really matter what trig ratio you want to use. I'm going to use tan just because I felt like it. So I'll go tan of theta equals opposite 0.34 over adjacent, 13.21. So 0 0.4 divided by 13.21, I got that was equal to 0 0.0257. So to find theta, that'll be equal to tan to the negative 1 of 0 0.0257, and I get that that is equal to about 1.5 degrees. So the angle in here is about 1.5 degrees. Let's go back up to my original drawing. So what we found with all that information is that when you add up these two vectors, the result is a 13 Newton vector, so longer than either of the two, and the angle it makes with respect to traveling in a straight line is going to be 1.5 degrees.